In this video, you will be able to take ESPN's basketball power index percentages, convert that into a money line and parlay betting model. Hello everyone, Jonathan here with Excel Help Now. I got another ESPN power index model overview for you today. Um, so I have ESPN daily lines pulled up here. If you go to ESPN.com, NBA daily lines, it'll list the matchups for the day and then some data on record against the spread, line, money line. But the really thing we care about is this BPI. So this is the percentage that they're saying the Hornets have a 52.5% chance to, to beat the Wizards and then just down the line. And so this is the, the data we're going to be using. We're going to be able to take this BPI percent number and create a money line betting model and also I'm going to be able to show you how to create a parlay betting model as well. So if you watch my NFL or college football, we just went over money line. I've expanded that NBA to be able to have parlays built out into the model as well. And then just something else I noticed whenever I went to ESPN's website today, uh, historically the odds were by Caesars and you can see now odds by ESPN bet. So for those of you that have Barstool, that's actually been uh, bought out and getting converted into ESPN bet. And I believe that's happy November 18th. So in a couple of weeks, ESPN bet will be a new betting platform overtaking the current Barstool's platform. So just wanted to, I noticed that and I thought that was pretty interesting. So just wanted to know that that is a, a change happening. So be on the lookout. Hopefully there's some good promos, um, just new offerings, maybe some profit boosts. Thanks. So just be aware of that. But otherwise let's dive in. Let's create a, a betting model of this. So I'm going to go ahead and just highlight the the data here, grab everything for today, control C, and then I'm going to flip over to Excel. And then I have a, a copy paste section here, and then I'm just do control V to bring in that data. So if you do this, you're going to notice it's going to bring in all the team icons. And if you want to get rid of icons, and this is a good tool just to use for any Excel, it doesn't have to be uh, NBA logos, but just any um, copy paste that brings in additional picture icons. If you do control G, it's going to bring up this go to dialog box. And if you click special and then you go to objects and then click OK, it's going to highlight all the objects on the sheet. You can see all of our icons are now highlighted. Do D and it deletes them. So there is our data, nice and clean looking table with all the matchups in this BPI percent. So what I have built out here, very similar look to the football I'm going to pull in the, the matchups for each one of these games. And I'm just doing um, an if is number just to look up if there's a BPI percent that I'm going to pull in that. Because you can see we have some blank rows here that we don't need to know the 6 p.m. Uh, tip off time. Uh, basically, I do that for all of the area where there could be games. And then I have a manual adjustment column here. So right now we're bringing in the BPI percentage of 47.5 and 52.5 for the Wizards versus Hornets matchup. If you wanted to adjust those, let's say you think the Wizards actually are, are more likely to win. You could add 5% to theirs, remove 5% from the Hornets. That's going to adjust the win percentages there. And then we have American odds. So that is the formula to convert win percentages or just percentages in general to American odds. So I'm doing that. And so this is where we can use this odds column to be able to do line shopping to see if any sports book is offering odds that are longer than minus 111 or plus 111. And then I'm bringing in the width here. So that's looking at this money line column. So it's the absolute value difference between the underdog and favorite. That's your width value. And that's important just to show how much variability there is in the matchup. So you can see um, if you go up the percentages here, so the Bucks Pistons is the biggest underdog matchup with um, Pistons only at a 15.2% chance to, to win. And so the width on that matchup is going to be greater. So the, the sports books are less confident in their line. So there there's going to be a larger gap between the favorite underdog. And it's just a good way to kind of filter out some of those big disparity matchup so you don't have to to place bets on them and um, a general rule that I like to use is 50 for NBA you could definitely bump that up to 100 I mean there's on any given night I would say 
I mean, this is true with any sport, but I think with NBA, it's definitely true. Any given night, um, any team can win for the most part. So I, I think if you could, you could up that if you want a little bit more opportunities than if you give it at 50. So like the Jazz Pacers at 68.7 and 31.3, that's a 60 market width. You can see the 180 minus 240. So I, if you brought it up to 100, you could say, okay, that game's in play as well. So just something to, to play around with. Um, just know the higher the, the market width you tolerate, the there's just going to be more variance in your outcomes and greater chance that you're betting on outcomes that are just really unlikely to happen. So that's just a kind of overview of what we're we're looking at here. But let's go ahead and just see what else we have in the model here. Up at the top, I have where we can input the date, the the team we're going to bet on, and then it's a money line, and then whatever the sports book is and whatever they're offering to see if this is a, a, a bet we should be placing or not based on these break-even odds here. So let's let's flip over to Sportsbook Review and just see what they have for off line offering. So this is a, a really good uh, line shopping website, sportsbookreview.com. And they have spread, money line, and total tables. And they just do a really good job of making it really clean. And you can see all the matchups on one screen. It'll highlight in blue what are the, the best odds for each matchup. So we got Washington at plus 116 on FanDuel. And right now with the ESPN BPI, 47.5% that converts to plus 111 odds. So that actually would be a bet that we should take. So let's plug that in. So it's FanDuel, it's the Wizards. And that was plus 116. So we should bet $5.60 based on a thousand account value, a Kelly adjustment factor. And then I have the Kelly adjustment, Kelly criteria model calculation down below. So what we have is we are saying there's a 47.5% chance according to ESPN BPI and the sports book FanDuel in this instance is saying there's only a 46.3% chance for the Wizards to win. So anytime that you have either you're using like a sharp method, which I've gone over positive expected values in Pinnacle, or you can use ESPN, whatever your win percentage, your implied win percentage is. If you're if that is coming out to be greater than what the sports book win percentage is, that's that's positive expected value. So 46.3% chance, but we're saying they actually have a 47.5% chance. So and that 46.3% is just converting the plus 116 to percentages. So anytime you see that, that's that's positive expected value. That's where you should be betting. And then you should be using the Kelly criteria, which is just a way to wager the optimal betting amount based on the probability of winning times the decimal odds times your bankroll times your adjustment factor. So this is how to do a systematic approach of, of bettings. And it's, uh, it, it's really the only way I, I bet. And I think it's really the only way you can ensure that you're going to make money in the long run. And of course, you're going to have time periods where you're going to lose money. But over the long run, if you're consistently betting on outcomes that are more likely to happen than what the sports books are, are saying they are just the law of numbers that's that's going to work out in your favor and so let's see if we can do one more so we got the jazz pacers 31.3 68.7 plus 219 minus 219 so plus 205 is the best on utah and minus 240 so no vet there boston versus philadelphia plus 119 minus 119 Okay, so here's a big disparity here. So in ESPN, they're saying that the Celtics are actually the underdog. And then every other sports book is saying they are the favorite. So you're going to see we're going to have a really big bet to place on the 76ers. So bet MGM plus 125. forty four. And 80 cents. So right now we're saying they have a 54.4% chance based on ESPN's BPI and the sports book that MGM saying they only have a 44.4% chance. So big disparity between what ESPN's modeling out and all the other sports books are offering. So that's a big bet. And that's, um, that's a pretty big assumption to, to take. So this is where I think the manual adjustment could come into play. So you could do 
I'm gonna actually haircut that by five percent. Say you know, basically it's a, a 50-50 split between the Celtics and 76ers. And then if that's the case, then you can see we're only gonna bet. 22 30 on that so that's just a way to use the model i do think the manual adjustment can come into play uh, just because espn bpi model is i think it's a good proxy but it's there's times where you know maybe you want to be able to have a better gauge of what you think the matchup is going to be or you just don't like what um, the wager on is and you want to do another haircut you could do it with just a manual adjustment so just wanted to outline that's the data there and then let's go over to the parlay tab. So this is something new that I've built out for college basketball and NBA basketball. And so what I've done is I'm just doing a pivot table here on our data. And then I'm bringing that in so it's nice and clean look. And then it actually is going to sort it by most likely chance to win down to the lowest. And so from here, you can actually just build a parlay. And so what I've done is I've created this table so we can bring in our win percentages. I have some conditional color scheme here just to make it nice and clean looking to see most likely to win down to least likely, the break even odds, and then the market width. So it's a really good way just to be able to build out any round robin parlays that you'd want to because we're limited with on this BPI data. We don't have a total prediction or a spread prediction. So you really can just do money line bets, but doing parlay is another way you can kind of expand your, your betting pool. And so if we want to have a couple teams here, let's do the, just the two biggest favorites. We have the Timberwolves and Knicks, so 81% and 79.3. So we bring those two in. We now have a two-leg parlay. And then from here, you can see what different sports books are offering. Maybe there's just one sports book that you like to to place most of your bets on, you could go plug this in to DraftKings and do a round robin two leg parlay of the Knicks and Timberwolves and see what their their odds are. So right now, the break even odds for these two would be minus 180, and let's say that DraftKings is offering minus 175 on that on those two to both win. Then you can see we're going to use the Kelly criteria again. We have a four dollar and ten cent bet so this is a way to to kind of expand your betting opportunities and what i've done is just pulled in the two win percentages and then in order to do any type of parlay implied win percentage uh, the product function will look at wherever there's a, a value and just multiply the, all those together so it's a nice um, function to use if you're trying to build a parlay table and so 81% times 79.3 is 64.2. And then you can will convert our decimal odds of the sports book value. And then we have our Kelly adjustment factor we're bringing in. And then we're going to find the expected value. There's the formula I'm calculating expected value on. And then we'll use that to find our bet size. So a lot of math there, kind of complicated, but that's just want to highlight and conceptually that's what I'm doing, but we can add, we can add other teams in here. Let's say we want to grab the Pacers. So now we're at a three leg parlay. And so, um, we still have that minus 175 value in there. So now it's not an expected value bet because our break even odds now are plus 127. But let's say DraftKings is offering plus 150 on the next Timberwolves and Pacers all to win tonight. Then you can see we should bet 1720. And then this, I think the win percentage for a parlay is really helpful. Just so you know, like 44.1% chance of this to actually hit. Because I'm, I'm sure you, you've you noticed when you log into your sportsbooks apps, you're always push parlays, especially same game parlays. And it's nice to be able to know what the actual win percentage is of those parlays. Because whenever you just see the odds and it's like, oh, I could bet a dollar and get a payout of you know, $10 or $100 sometimes. I mean, just based on what, the offering is, but the win percentage on that is like 0.1%. It's, it's nice to know what, what, like how likely some of these parlays are because it, the odds do diminish pretty quickly as you add more legs. So let's say we think the Spurs or let's say, um, the Suns are going to win. See, now we're down to 19.8% chance with just a four leg parlay. So, uh, definitely 
something to I think it's I think it's pretty helpful to be able to have this. Like I said, it expands your betting opportunities uh, pretty quick to to just build out some parlays, and you can just yeah, play around with it, pick who you like. I mean, there's a lot of subjectivity with this, um, so just you know be cautious whenever you're doing parlay bets. Uh, but I mean, if if the math works out, then it's definitely something that. Uh, especially if there's some odds boost opportunities that are getting offered too. I think you can make some money on parlays if you, if you do it correctly and have a objective way of valuing them. So yeah, that's, that's the model. Um, hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, I think it's another way, another tool in your tool belt. I've gone over the sharp method using pinnacle, but ESPN BPI is another great tool that you can use to, to make positive expected value bets. So I do have this model available for purchase for those interested, link in the description. Otherwise, thank you for watching and God bless.